there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and welcome to our Sunday Chit Chat Q&A video. If you are new to this channel, every Sunday I read through any comments, any text messages, uh, emails, any DMs, and I ch typically choose one topic to go over and elaborate on. So if you are interested, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please make sure that you are subscribed and let's get right into this so video. So today, the question that I wanna go over is, I wanna talk about slower months in the hair business, in the hair industry. And this video is inspired by one of the comments that I received a few days ago and I really really appreciate that comment I I don't know if it was a few days ago or if it was yesterday but I really appreciate that comment because this is a, a topic that a lot of us can relate to you know and I wanted to kind of get an idea for you know is June typically slower in the hair industry and so I reached out to a few people that I do work with as far as drop shipping and a few people that own salons um, or have hair companies that have been in business for you know a while to see you know hey is June typically a slower month for you and then I also researched on Google because I really wanted to see you know in my experience with my business it depends you know it's not really I can't really pinpoint if June specifically or if like April specifically or December specifically it's it's slower for me because it really all depends. One thing that I've noticed is that. You can definitely see patterns in your business the longer that you've been in business, but it can definitely also just, it could be different from one year to the next, completely different. So you may notice, you know, hey, last year I was very, very busy around January, February, March, you know, and slower during, you know, April, May, and June. And then the next year may roll around and you may be anticipating the same based on that pattern, but it could be completely different. You can notice, hey, you know, I'm really, really slow in the, toward the beginning of the year. Typically, it, it's it's fast or it's it, I'm busier. But this year, for some reason, I'm slower. You know, it could definitely change. And then it also depends on how you're selling the hair. So if I'm selling my hair strictly online, then my months, my slower months or faster months can also differ from someone else that's selling their hair completely different on a different platform, such as like salons. If they're selling their hair in salons, then it could be different. And so when I looked online just to kind of get a feel for, you know, what months tend to be slower as well, um, it it was a broad, you know, a broad variety of, you know, hey, my business is typically slower this month. My business is typically slower at the end of the year. My business is typically slower um, during this time. And so it, it, it can definitely vary. But one thing that is going to probably be consistent across the board is that we all experience slow months in business. So for example, like with construction, with construction, typically you can say with no doubt that you're going to be busy in the summer you know the summer is going to be our busy time so be prepared to be at work be prepared to do long hours be prepared for overtime but the winter you know it's it's really typically it's slow so it's easier to say you know a statement like that based on certain industries but with the hair industry in my opinion i feel that it's so complex and it really depends on exactly what you're selling so there are some hair companies that sell not just virgin but they sell raw they sell different wigs they sell braiding hair uh they sell the um keratin extensions or keratin extensions they sell different things so they may have a different experience too but like i mentioned one thing that we can all probably relate to is that some months are going to be slower than others so i really want to make this video because i think it's a great talking point and not only that but i think this is a great opportunity to kind of share some things that we can do when our businesses are slow to still drive the progress forward and to still you know put some money in our pocket so Okay, the first thing that I want to go over is blogs. I've said this in some other videos, but creating a blog for your hair company is definitely a great idea. Um, having some place that people can come back to is not just going to help increase the um, amount of awareness with your business. It's not only going to help with your like search engine pop-ups and analytics and things like that. For example, if you are creating a blog and it's you know your it's it's in your hair company's name, when anyone Google's certain things that blog could pop up. And so that's another way to kind of advertise and direct people back to your website and to convert more people to, you know, actual your actual customers. So creating a blog uh, is, is a great way to spread your name in the slow seasons. And you actually have to have, like for a blog, you do have to have some time or you have to make the time. Because when I first started my hair business, I was on my blog all the time, constantly updating, just like I'm on YouTube, but I was on my blog like that. And I enjoy doing it. But the busier that you get or the more, you know, things that you put on your plate, uh, you know, the more you have to kind of divvy up your time. And so I'm not on my blog as much as I was in the beginning when I first started my hair company. Um, but that's something that I am wanting to get back to. I'm wanting to spend more time on my blog because it is a good way to encourage other people to check you out. 
And you want to make sure when you are on your blog that you're posting about things that people are interested in. So if it's if you're a hair company, different hair facts, different hair tips, different things that can help people. It's going to give people a reason to come back to your blog. It's going to give people a reason to talk about your blog. It's going to give people a reason to share information, to go to your website. And it's just a win-win. And so if you are slower, creating a blog and spending time really building up that blog is a great way to spend your time, in my opinion. And not only that, but you can also get paid from your blog. So once you you start building up the traffic you can also put ads on your blog to kind of generate some revenue back in your pocket i'm not saying that when you first start your blog you know uh, your blog revenue is going to compensate for the lack of sales that you're getting that month but i'm saying that you're planting the right seed so that you can start to grow different streams of income I always talk about not putting everything in one basket and your hair company is, is no different. You want to make sure that you're always looking at different ways to bring more income to your business, to bring more awareness you know, to your brand and to get your word out there. And so if you are down or slower you know, during a certain month or during a certain season, make sure that you kind of have a list of things that you can do to still drive progress. And also having that list of things that you can do to drive progress is also going to help with some of that um, discouragement because I know a lot of times when you do start to slow down you know say you had a really really fast month in May and then June comes around and you're like okay all right you know where are my orders where are my sales you know it could be a little bit discouraging or say you know you're, you're really really busy in the beginning of the year January February March and then April comes around and it just stops you know May comes around and it's slow June comes around and it's still slow that can be discouraging and so if you do have something that's still you know, if you do have something kind of pre-planned or written out that can still give you different uh, ideas or like, you know, like a checklist written out for different like to do things when your business is slow, it kind of helps you stay focused. You still are working on your business. It helps you stay consistent and it kind of still gives you that motivation, that hope like, okay, I know this month is slow, but I still can do certain things to bring more awareness back to my brand. The next thing that I want to go over is make sure that you are rereading through everything on your website. So even if you have your website just how you like it, even if everything looks great, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, when your months are slow or when you're not really getting that many sales, take a look at your website. You know, just really take a personal look at your website. Really try to figure out, you know, what can I do? What can I add to my website? What can I take away from it? What can I do to make this a better experience? Because there's always ways that we can all improve. I don't care if you see the best website out there. There's still something that that website can do to drive the progress forward. So just look at different ways, you know, whether it be connecting your blog to your website, whether it be going back and looking at some of the analytics that you have on your website, whether that be making different contact uh, options on your website, whatever that looks like for your business, make sure that you're kind of going through everything, rereading over your policies, going over your shipping time frame. Does this still work? You know, how does my shipping time frame differ if I have a sale? Does it differ? You know, kind of going over things like that is also going to help make sure that everything is moving forward with your business. Just going back and double checking everything and making sure everything is right so that when you do start getting those orders, when your business does start speeding up, you, you, you're ready to go. You're ready to go. Another thing that I want to go over is making sure that you save your money. So like I mentioned in a few videos ago, a lot of times when our businesses are very, very busy, and I'm not saying this for everyone, but sometimes some of us are like, you know, hey, I'm good for, I'm good. You know, I'm gonna just keep everything the same. And we just get so wrapped up in what we're doing that we kind of forget. We forget to do certain things. We forget to make sure that we're saving this amount. We forget to make sure that we're putting this back into our business. And so when we're slower, when we have the time to sit back and just think, take advantage of that time. And so I know it's really easy to get wrapped up in, you know, the sales and the orders and make the money and things like that but we also have to realize a part of every business is ups and downs you know what I mean like every business is completely different you know your business better than anyone so take a moment you know accept the time that you're getting the downtime and just look at different opportunities that you can do to your business to your brand to really make sure that everything is in tip-top shape so that when you do start getting those orders again like I mentioned everything just runs smooth Another thing that we can take advantage of on our down seasons is networking, collaborating, doing different events that we wouldn't have been able to participate in because our business was too busy or we were, you know, doing some other things. And so when you have free time, look into different uh, events that you can go to. So maybe just Google, you know, pop up shops near me, hair shows, different things that you can do, different events that you can go to and put yourself in to really network. Even if you really don't want to go to the events, because I know sometimes you'll be like, hey, I really don't even feel like going to meet nobody. Even if you don't want to push yourself outside of your comfort zone to really see, you know, hey, what can I do to kind of get myself out of this, you know, I'm just sitting here waiting phase and what can I do to make sure that I'm still moving forward and still networking? 
Um, I'm going to get back to some other ways that you can make money. So another way that you can make money uh, while you're just sitting there and waiting is figuring out different products that you can bring to your website. So although it's great to sell hair, although it's great to sell extensions, think outside of the box just a little bit. You know, what else can I bring to my website so that if it is slow on hair one month, I can still generate some revenue from other aspects of my business. So whether it be you're wanting to incorporate maybe lashes on your website, maybe you want to look at incorporating a lipstick or incorporating um, another beauty product or satin scarves or um, bonnets or different things like that, you know. So I'm also looking at different options and different things that I want to bring to my website as well. I'm not saying that you have to go ahead and, you know, add everything and make it just a whole, you know, um, beauty supply store on your website. I'm not saying that at all, which, you know, if you want to, that's not a bad idea. But I'm just saying that look into different options that you can add to your website in your down season to try to bring more revenue and more awareness because some people may not want to purchase, um, you know, a wig this month. But then you may have some people that say, hmm, I do. And then some people may want to purchase a bonnet or a silk scarf. Some people may say, hmm, I'm just here because I need some lashes. So the more products that you have, the more people that you can kind of reach out to, uh, that's another way to keep the income coming, keep the income coming. Now, I would recommend, especially if you're newer to the business, to try not to add too many products at once. Um, you know, if you want to try just another product and just see how that goes, that's fine. But I would recommend, you know, try not to add too, too much. Um, that's just my, my personal recommendation. You can definitely do what you feel is best for your business, but that is another way to generate more income, having other products on your website uh, to, to kind of compensate for when you're not really heavily selling hair. Um, another thing that I want to go over that can help bring income back to your business when you are, you know, slower is looking into raffles. So I've never done a hair raffle, but I have seen some hair raffles done and I think it's a good idea. So some of the ways that people do raffles is they do like um, you put in a dollar and you put in a dollar and you put in a dollar to buy a ticket. And once you buy the tickets, you know, we go ahead and we raffle off this so we raffle off that and so that's another way to kind of bring a little bit of money back to your business i'm not saying that it's going to be a lot because you still are going to be giving away something but it's still a way to kind of generate some money to your business so if you want to look into different raffles as well again i have not done a raffle for my hair company but i've seen a lot of raffles done i think it's a pretty cool idea i mean at least it's something to look into but that could be another way to kind of generate more income for your hair business and then the last thing that i want to go over is you want to make sure that you are i don't I'm not gonna say you have to do this, but it's a good idea to look into different sales. And so it's not always about being the cheapest, it's not always about having the best, best price, but it's the overall package like we go over in a lot of videos. But it's a good idea and it kind of draws attention and grabs people's interest when they do see the word sale or discount or percentage off or free shipping. So try to make sure, especially when you are slow, if it's in the summer, if it's in the winter, you know, really doesn't matter what month, you know, whatever month is, you know, slower for you, try to do something that's going to bring the attention back, you know, so some kind of keywords that are going to draw interest is really, really good to use. You can use those words on your marketing emails, your social medias, on your website just something that's going to put like a urgency in your customers minds and something that's going to say you know hey this is a great deal this is a great time for you to purchase you know let's go ahead and make this happen so whatever that looks like for you and your brand that's also a good idea but really I just wanted to make this video to say you know ultimately you know every business has ups and downs every business has their slow seasons their fast seasons and so we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of everything with our business you know we're taking advantage of when we're really really booked really really busy you know we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of all the times when we're slow when we're down when our orders you know have seemed like they've come to a complete halt we still want to make sure that we're thinking of creative ways to bring the traffic to our brand, to bring business to our website and to make sure that everything's ready to go for when we do start getting orders again. Uh, not just that, but we wanna look at different ways and different um, lanes where we can plant seeds to bring that income in, to start growing revenue, because that's that's very important. Even if you're looking at a blog and you're like, hey, I'm only, only made 25 cents today. That's still 25 cents, you know, more than you had when you woke up. And I know it may sound funny, but we have to start looking at everything business like you know hey i need to make sure that i'm making money today what can i do to make money what can i do and it's okay to still run your hair business but still look at different ways to generate income 
And that's why I mentioned adding different products. That's why I mentioned going to different events and networking. It's okay. It's okay to look at different, like I said, different means of making money while you're still running your hair company because ultimately it's always about reinvesting. And to reinvest, a lot of times you do need money to do so. So just keeping our minds open to different opportunities that we have when we are slower and just looking at the glass half full is really going to help. It's helped in my experience. And, um, you know, I just wanted to share that with you all. So, so if y'all have any questions, comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.